pain may only be temporary, but the aches and pains the Bengals have had this season have left more than physical marks. How about a one in three record with plenty of question marks heading into the bye week? Some of the same questions the Bengals had this time last year. That team started one in four, but at least had its health. So it is a little different uh, look to it than what we had a year ago. Last year at this time, we didn't have, I think we were missing maybe Reggie Kelly if that. I don't even think we were missing him yet at this point. So uh, I don't know that we had a guy out at Dubai. You know, maybe one. I think Corey was the only guy injured maybe at Dubai last year. So uh, it's a little different feel for it. We can't sit down and feel sorry for ourselves and say, hey, we're not, we don't have this guy here. When, when your number is called and stuff in the play, just be a football player. And be a hard-nosed football player that, that, that want to go out there and hit, tackle, block, catch, run and throw. I think we'll be okay. Now, every week, NFL teams are required to provide an injury report. That is, all players who are on injured reserve or listed as questionable, doubtful, or probable to play. The Bengals lead the league with the most players hurt with 18, but two other AFC North rivals, the Browns and Ravens, are banged up as well. Good evening. Bengals defensive end Justin Smith is in hot water, and it has nothing to do with missing a tackle. The Bengals' 2001 first-round draft pick was arrested and charged with a DUI overnight in Dayton. Smith's blood alcohol level registered in it. 0.152, nearly twice the state's legal limit. The fourth-year player faces a maximum of six months in jail and a fine of up to $1,000 for the misdemeanor. If Smith is convicted or admits to violating the law, the NFL can fine, suspend, or take other appropriate action. Yet another of his former players, safety Anthony Mitchell, the six-year pro who was recently released by the Jaguars but also played for Marvin's Ravens, provides insurance in the secondary. Kevin Case for Harn, Still having back problems. Kim Herring out with an injured foot. And Roger Beckett's concussion will cause him to miss another two to four weeks. You know, I guess they have different um, ways to really evaluate it. And due to the nature of things in the NFL, how they want to prevent these type of things from occurring, then um, I guess they have pretty good time they want you to stay out. So, you know, that's pretty much what I'm facing. Rest, that's one thing I don't need right now. Uh, I've been resting for the last two weeks, but I'm trying to get back and get to the swing of things. Like I said, I'm going to be doing field work this week, so I'm, I'm going to slowly but surely, you know, get this thing roaring and ready to go because I'm ready to play. You know, I, I've, I've been watching for the last two, three weeks, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Now, the Bengals also re-signed to the practice squad, Elton Patterson. He gets a do-over, but fellow defensive end Justin Smith doesn't and today apologizes for his arrest Tuesday morning on charges of driving under the influence. Uh, I just want to apologize today to my teammates, my coaches and our fans for, my situa for the situation I put myself in in the Bengals organization. Uh, I cast this in an unfavorable light and uh, it's a disrupt disruption to our team and the fans don't deserve it. I do know however that it's important me to focus now on the commitment to the to my team and the city and uh, always cast the, the organization and myself in a good light for me. Evening everyone, linebacker Nate Webster visited the locker room today on crutches and expects to have his knee ready for workouts in March. New safety Anthony Mitchell thinks he'll be ready to go Sunday if Kim Herring and Kevin Case for Harn aren't healthy. That would allow Q1 Ratliff to go back to corner and Medea Williams to back up both. Well, you, I come in and help them. They can focus on what they're supposed to do now, you know, because they did bring another safety in, so they don't probably have to jump back from corner to safety. But get everybody to focus on what they have to do and come in and play some good football. Ravens running back Jamal Lewis going to be sentenced to four months in federal prison, two months in a halfway house after pleading guilty to a lesser charge in a federal drug conspiracy case. Under the deal with prosecutors, Lewis is going to serve his sentence during the NFL season. But... He could face the league suspension, I should say, after the NFL season. Could face the league suspension. Five weeks into the regular season, and already the Bengals are beaten up. We're not just talking about the scoreboard. Yes, they're in last place in the division with a 1-3 record, but they also lead the league in battered bodies. 19 players listed as questionable, doubtful, out, or placed on injured reserve. As Marshall Harris tells us, for one group, the bye week couldn't have come any sooner. While bruised might describe the Bengals' egos after dropping three of their first four games, it definitely described their well-being after the loss to Pittsburgh. From receiver Peter Warwick's knee to safety Rogers Beckett's concussion, there's no telling how many healthy bodies will be ready for Cleveland. You know, I talked, you know, with different doctors, whatever. They told me how they felt about it. You know, I told them how I felt about it. But, you know, it's just one of those things, you know. When it comes to getting healthy, the Bengals' secondary has to be their primary concern. The defensive backs were so badly banged up against Pittsburgh, it took two rookies to play the safeties. 
and they were forced to make big calls. With me and Key on having two safeties, we kind of, a lot of times, just kind of looked at each other, <laughs> waiting to see who's going to make the call. But uh, it, was, we definitely, um, it was definitely rough. Um, definitely looking forward to having those guys back. When I'm out there at corner, I have to, you know, mentally go through what the safety has to do and the safety's reads. When I'm out there at safety, I have to do the, the same, but just the opposite. With Kevin Case Mahorn and Beckett knocked out at safety, it's an act Ratliff may have had to keep up if Marvin Lewis hadn't gone out and signed safety Anthony Mitchell. Well, I'm pretty much comfortable with it right now, so I figure I'd just continue to look over the, you know, the terminology on the um, bye week and I'll be good next week. And the hope is that so will the rest of the secondary. Regardless of who takes the field, rookie or veteran, one thing's expected. Make plays. <laughs> I mean, they, there's really nothing to be said. Uh, they expect us to come in here and not to miss a beat. So we try to do the best job that we can. Marshall Harris, Local 12. Marshall, thank you very much. Time for you at home to pick up the phone and give us your opinion. Who is your pick to win the AFC North? The Bengals, the Browns, the Ravens, or the Steelers? Call us right now at 345-1212. I want your vote. And your results are coming up a little later in the show. What's going wrong with the Bengals? There we are. More importantly, how can the team fix it? Let's toss it over to the voice of the Bengals, Brad Johansson, for some answers. It's who asked you. Oh, Brad. Harvey, thank you very much. Richard Skinner, 1360 Homer of the Sports Animal and Turfway Park. And Kevin Goheen joins the Who Asked You panel. Cincinnati you know, Post, nice get, to have you, get, you with us. Well, thanks, Brad. And you don't get to wander in every so often. You're, you're you know? welcome to wander anytime you like. We have a little bye week. We have some things to solve. And you know what? We are the gentlemen to try and figure out how to solve all of the Bengals' problems. Worst thing that they need to address in bye week. Worst thing they need to or that they can. There's a difference for me. Let's go with need. Need, they need to somehow address how they're going to fix the run defense. Because you're not going to be able to do it personnel-wise, obviously. So you're going to have to start doing it somehow, either scheme-wise, technique-wise, or better tackling-wise. So you're saying they can't three. address that this week? I, I think it's going to be awful tough. I don't think you can address that really until the offseason when you improve your personnel in the front seven. But they, they're going to have to find a way. I mean, you're not going to give up with 12 games left to go. So something scheme-wise, technique-wise, tackle-wise has to be done in the bye week to improve in those areas. Kevin, need? Need. What they, what they need to do is get healthy. I mean, that, that's first and foremost, and that's what they can do. Um, you know, you can't go out, and this isn't baseball, you can't go out and get yourself, uh, make a trade for a big stud uh, defensive tackle. But you can get healthy, and like Richard was saying, with the guys you've got in there, they just, they have to play their assignments better. If that's what they're not doing, you know, if, if they're not doing their assignments and, you know, trying to do too much, you know, they've got to, they've got to, figure out how not to do that. Okay, Bengals went 8-8 eight eight last year. Expectations were extremely high. They improved in free agent market. They thought that they were okay. Carson Palmer was going to be okay because he had a lot of offensive weapons. Are you saying now that this team simply just wasn't good enough talent-wise to really compete with what people thought they were going to be able I, I to do? I think that's true, and I think sometimes 8-8 eight eight does that because it leads you to say, okay, if we add a couple of bit parts, we're going to be better automatically. And I remember Marvin's quote in the, in the preseason, we are better at every position. Well, they really weren't. I mean, we all knew that they weren't better on the defensive line. They didn't get better. They didn't add any personnel. They tried to add personnel and couldn't do it. Then when you have a little injury problem mixed into it with some guys who maybe are sliding backwards. Yeah, a lot of injury problems. Problem. With some guys maybe sliding backwards a little bit, that makes for a bad mix. That makes for suddenly the 8-8 eight eight where you thought, okay, we're moving forward to a couple of little nicks and cuts and this and that. You're back to maybe a 4-12 and football team. Okay, we, we talked about biggest negative. What's the greatest positive of this 1-3 and three team going into bye week? That's a good question because I can't find too many. I mean, they're nothing? very close to 0-4. I, there, there's a couple of things. Shane Graham's consistency continues, I think, to be very, very good. It's kind of nice know, to have a kicker. It is. It, it really very much is. Uh, I think the other part to it, too, believe it or not, is, is Rudy. And when Rudy's been given room to run, I think he's shown. I mean, he's on pace, Brad, for, for maybe the best season by a Bengals running back ever. Doesn't seem like it. We don't feel like it because they're playing catch-up in every game. But I think Rudy, with, it, with another good year, I think has been a positive as well. Kevin, greatest positive? I think it has to be uh, Carson in the development he's he started into. Yeah, he's one in three. Somebody he's, right now is going, throwing. what? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, seven, uh, fourth, uh, seven interceptions, five of them in the fourth quarter. But this is all part of his learning process. What you saw him do against Miami is what he can be. And I, I think that ultimately is going to be the biggest positive. Uh, you know, take a step back and, and see the big picture. Um, you know, maybe this team's not not better than what it was last year. It will be better, though. Well, he's completing almost 55% of his passes. Uh, and, and I'll say you say you like what he did in Miami, which I did as well. Yeah. I thought what he did in game one against New York was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. 
it's unfortunate that we haven't seen the progression because of what people are trying to do to this quarterback. But what now. you've seen is also he's, he's played against some pretty darn good defenses in, in the Dolphins, the, the Ravens, and then the Steelers. He's seen some really good defenses. Um, it's not going to get easier as the season goes on. He's still got a Dallas uh, out there who's just really fast. Well, and, and, and keep in mind, too, he's had to try to lead a fourth quarter comeback against mm -hmm. the Jets, which he couldn't do and threw an interception. Same against the Steelers. Asking too much because of what the defense is doing. I, I, obviously, no question about it. I mean, you're, you're asking this kid essentially in the first four games to win you or bring you back in all four. Now, granted, they were tied to Miami game, but he led that drive. So he's been asked to do that in all four games. I don't know if you can find many quarterbacks in the league in their first four games have been asked to do that. Kevin, you, you've been in the locker room with me, and we felt that probably, yeah. especially after Pittsburgh, more than, than any other. Chad is frustrated. Yeah, he is. He's extremely frustrated. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to pop his mouth off, but yeah. guaranteed he doesn't like the way the playbook is working out. No, it's not. It, it, he, he was in such a groove with John Kitna that John Kitna would throw him balls when it was in double coverage uh, because he knew Chad could go get it. Him and Carson are still developing that relationship. And, you know, Carson, the four passes that uh, Chad got uh, at Pittsburgh, you know, they, they were all against double coverage. They both said Carson's not even supposed to throw those passes to him. But Carson believed, you know, he's got to get the ball to him somehow. So uh, it, it will. And when you get Peter Warwick back, that will help out. Uh, well, if we, you we, get we, Peter yeah, Warwick we, back, well, yeah. and, and the other question is, and we addressed this last week, where's Kelly Washington? That's a great this question. This is the guy that was supposed to open things up. Mm -hmm. Where's Kelly Washington when Cliff Russell makes all of the plays and Kelly Washington doesn't show up till fourth quarter? It, it's yeah. funny, too, that, that all of a sudden we thought this was a deep receiving core that minus Peter Warwick, and with obviously Hushmanzada having a case of the drops and the inconsistence and no Kelly Washington, you're looking around going, who's the second wide receiver, let alone the third wide receiver? You know, I, I would hate the venture that they have to go into free agency or go into uh, the draft again looking for a wide receiver when you thought you've addressed that in the last couple of years of the draft. All right. Uh, I, I'm very quick to having to end this. Second half. I'm going to give me a record, and, and I know that it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. One and three, if you're, you're thinking nine and seven, now they're standing at one and three. Where do they finish this year? Well, I said nine and seven at the beginning of the season. I still think you they think they can get to nine and seven. I still think they can. Yeah, because maybe I have a little uh, little faith in, in Marvin, but I think what you saw them do last year, they didn't look so good last year either. At you know uh, at the break, they're one and four, and they made a turnaround. The, the big thing was John Kitna really increased his play. He cut out the the turnover. They didn't have this schedule. No, they did. not That's the year. point. I think they go five and eleven, and, and and I can't find a road win. I mean, I'm searching, searching, searching. Now maybe they get that road win right off the bat after the bye week, and if they do, great momentum. But if they don't, that looks like a loss. Money night. You don't is think tough. Tennessee's loss. a place you can win? You can. You but don't I, think Washington's a place you can win? No, I think it's awful tough really? for this football team. I think it's going to be very hard pressed to win a game on the road, and when you start with that. Five wins would be a nice level to get to. It's going to be difficult. Let's hope it's more optimistic than yeah. we're painting it. Gentlemen, thanks for coming <laughs> in. Harvey, we'll send it back. You made the call. Now the results. We ask, who is your pick to win the AFC North? 33% go with the Steelers. 29% holding out hope for the Bengals. And 28% go with the Browns. Pretty split. Thanks if you're one of the nearly 500 callers 